Good morning. Good morning. Say a prayer for me, please. All right. What's your name? James. Uh, James? We prayed for James. James the Lesser. All right. I forget names. <laughs> On April 1st, I'd like to say happy birthdays to the fools. April 1st, April Fool's Day, Psalms 14.1. The fool has said in his heart, there is no God. Psalms 53 verse 1. On April 1st, April Fool's Day, the fool has said in his heart, there is no God. Hey, atheists, happy birthday. The Bible proclaims that you are a fool when you say there's no God. So shut up and proclaim your fullness on your birthday. Happy birthday. I just wanted to say that today, April 1st. Not too often do I get to preach on April 1st in the public and then get to address those people who proclaim that there is no God. And yet the Bible says... Prepare to meet thy God. You say there's no God, God says, get ready to meet me. How's that? Wouldn't you be quite shocked one day to stand before the holy God that you didn't believe in? So we come here, the Bible says, go in all the world and preach the gospel. That Jesus died according to the scriptures. He was buried. And he arose again the third day according to the scriptures. I hold in my right hand the word of God. The Bible. I hold in my hand, the left hand, the word of an atheist. Uh oh. The, the word that I hold in my hand, the left one, is evolutionist. In the beginning, nothing. A big bang. Where did big bang come from? Where did your brains come from, Mr. Atheist? It came from nothing. That's what you believe. And yet the Bible says in the beginning God created heaven and earth. God took birth and formed it, probably the little spit, John, Gospel of John, and he made man the body the soul, and breathed into him, and man became a living spirit. It's much better to believe in God as your creator than nothing. And though you believe there's no God, hey, that's belief. When you believe something, that's a religion, that's faith. When you believe that we all came from monkeys and nothing and Big Bang, that's a faith, that's a religion. So schools do preach a religion, it's called evolution. The big God that's a monkey, who eats bananas, who became hairless by holding an electric razor, making for electricity to be formed. Come on, man, it's evolution. If man came from apes, what about the women? Where did they come from? Aren't you women upset that evolution does not mention you? That's, that's chauvinist evolution. They do not mention where women came from, but men came from the apes. And they say there's no God. And yet they become gods themselves. And the Bible says, prepare to meet thy God. Hey, this is your birthday, April Fool's Day. This is a day that people go out and play pranks on people. This is a day of jokesters. This is the day of pack little jokes. And yet we come to you with the word of God of no joke. We come to you with the word of God of pure sincerity and of pure love that God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Now I wish you, atheists, a happy birthday today again. 
from Psalms 53, verse 1. The fool has said in his heart, there is no God. Now some of you people come up, oh, there's no God, but you don't believe that in your heart. In order to be a true atheist, you have to believe in the faith that you have never seen and a God that you proclaim that never is. And the Bible says to that answer, of calling you a fool, the Bible says, prepare to meet thy God. God's answer to your unbelief in Him is, you will meet Him. What is that noise? God says to the atheist that you're a fool and you're going to stand before the God that you don't believe in. Now, how foolish can you believe to believe in not a God that God says, I'm, uh, you're going to show up before me. You're going to stand before the God that you don't believe in. You've got to love the God of the Bible. He is so funny. He is so hilarious. So contradictory to what man believes. God calls you a fool for saying there is no God. He says, yeah, hey fool, you're going to stand before me. Now let's go to Romans chapter 1. I guess this is the course the Lord wants me to take today. Romans chapter 1. You're in here. You're in the Bible. Romans chapter 1. Verse 21. I'm going to quote to you from the King James 1611 Bible. So you don't think it is words of a priest, of a pastor, of man. These are the words of the Holy Spirit that told man to write them down. Man is the pen, the Holy Spirit is the ink. I begin. Because that when they knew God, they glorified not God. Neither were they thankful. Ninety-nine percent of you people right now have not been thankful to God. I don't even know what percentage of you proclaim there is no God. You're not thanking God for that money that you're handing to that vendor. And you're not thanking God for the fruit you're getting from that vendor by the money that you're giving to that vendor. You're thanking your employer, you're thanking yourself, you're thanking the United States government. Anything but the God that gave us. And the God that gave us our currency, that gave us jobs so we can work and take those jobs away and can take that currency and run it down to the ground as quick as you made it in 40 hours. The Bible says that we are to be thankful for God for everything. Everything gives thanks. And this country sets one day off as a day of Thanksgiving, and we give it to food and pigskin and get ready to do a Black Friday. We are a nation that told God to get out of the schools, get out of the city hall, get out of the courthouse. We are not thanking God. So you keep on wondering on your television set when you see people getting shot and getting killed by the masses. Because that's a result of your evolution. That's a result of, of your God, Satan. You don't want Jesus Christ, you'll get Satan. And with Satan, you'll get death in the streets. Read your Bible. You're not thankful. 
You're not thankful to God. And you know God. You just don't want to say so. Neither were they thankful, but became vain in their imagination. Oh, that's America. Let's go chase a Pokemon. Really? An imaginary creature, and we're going to go all crazy looking for an imaginary creature. We're going to shoot imaginary enemies on a television set or on a screen of a video game. We're going to go watch imaginary creatures and, and stuff on a screen and pay all kinds of filthy money for popcorn and soda to watch imagination. You're going to go on your computer and watch imagination. You're going to go on your television and watch imagination. But you will not show up in a Bible-believing church house tomorrow morning. And many of you, when you hear us come and preach the Word of God, you wish that what we're saying is imagination, and it's not. You have a great imagination that you are a great person. You are all the people, and your poop don't stink. That's a great imagination. Because the Bible says all have sinned. All have come short of the glory of God. You ain't good. You're a sinner. And sinners that reject Jesus Christ go into hell. That's what you are. Without Jesus Christ, you are a flame in a lake of fire that burneth forever. The imagination. There's a guy, a fornicated, filthy guy, say, imagine. Well, he's imagining hell today. You think that God will allow all of you into his heaven. God is holy. God said, be holy as I'm holy. God is not going to allow you into his heaven as a sinner. I don't care who said that. The Bible says, the lake of fire which burns forever. If your name's not written in the last book of life, Revelation chapter 20, you'll be cast into that flame of fire. Jesus said, depart from me, ye workers of iniquity. I never knew you. You think you're going to heaven. You might be seriously, seriously woken up when you stand before God. You may think there's no God, but when the Bible says, prepare to meet thy God, your imagination. See, you as a world, as a unsaved person, you have imagination. As a born-again, Bible-believing Christian, I have hope. There's a big difference. And their foolish heart. Oh! Oh, what did I read Isaiah 14? The fool has said in his heart, there's no God. And their foolish heart was darkened. So, let, let's, get, let's get this. Let's get this in context, fool. You don't mind if I call you a fool all day on your, bir on your birthday, do you, atheist? If you're an atheist and I say fool, I'm talking to you. Uh, Psalms chapter 14, verse 1. Proverbs chapter 1. Now their, their heart became darkened. The Bible says, Romans 1. You think that your life came from nothing. And here you are earning money to buy fruit. You are a fruit. You are a fool. And your belief that there was nothing there that created you is darkness. Because if nothing's there, it's dark. And the Bible says in Genesis 1, In the beginning God created heaven and earth, and God shined His light upon the earth, because God is light. The Bible speaks of those who are in Christ are light. The God speaks about you who are not in Christ, you're in darkness. John chapter 3. So, on your birthday, as an atheist who is a fool, you are darkened, and you don't even have a birthday candle that's lit. You blew it. 
I like that. I made myself. You are without light, without God. I'm reading from Romans chapter 1, 22. Professing themselves to be wise. Professors. I'm a professor of Scientology. I'm a professor of science. I'm a professor of history. I'm a professor of evolution. It says, profess themselves, Romans 1, 22. So where did you get the title professor? How did the professor get on Gilligan's Island? He got there by the King James 1611 Bible, professor. You stole your title of your scientist from a King James Bible that you don't believe in. I don't believe in God, I don't believe in the Bible, but we're going to call ourselves professors. Which comes out of the King James Bible, Romans chapter 1, verse 22. And you need to realize, oh, I'm going to reject God, but your entire life is centered around God and His Word. Do you know a lot of your sayings come from the Bible? By the skin of his teeth, that's in the Bible. The apple of your eye, that's in the Bible. Go to hell. You do not believe in hell, but you tell your friend to go to hell. What is that? By the very hairs of your head. That's all the Bible. For Christ's sake, that's in the Bible. Stop quoting the Bible when you say you don't believe the Bible. OMG. That's in the Psalms. Oh my God. Stop abbreviating it. Atheist. Today is your birthday. I give you a gift on your birthday. Happy birthday to the atheist. Happy birthday to the atheist. Happy birthday to you fools. Happy birthday, atheist. April 1st. April Fool's Day. Happy birthday. I give you a gift. The gift of God's eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. I told you I sung terrible. I'm enjoying this. I didn't know I could have so much fun on, on a holiday. Now let's go back to Romans chapter 1, shall we? Verse 22. Professing themselves to be wise. Uh-oh. You would think that I wrote this down, but I didn't. Thank God. Praise God, the Holy Spirit, that would lighten my tongue to preach to you guys. Because what does it say? I did not have planned this to say this today. I'll be honest with you. The Holy Spirit, by prayer, said, open the book and preach. You go all the world and preach the gospel, I will fill your lips. Pressing themselves to be wise, they became fools. Let's go back over here. Today's Bible verse is Psalm 14, verse 1. The fool has said in his heart, there is no God. Psalm 53, 1. The fool has said in his heart, there is no God. As I go back to Romans chapter 1, profess themselves to be wise, they became fools, because their foolish heart is darkened. If you proclaim there's no God, you are professing. You are in darkness. And you are a fool. Don't come arguing with me, I just quoted the Bible. I gave you two verses in Psalms, and we're dealing out of the book of Romans, chapter 1. And we're talking about your birthday on April Fool's Day. You are a professing, dark, unlearned fool. And you use the Bible in your life. Though you profess it not to be so. I wonder which name you use when you curse. 
Oh, let's see. Buddha, damn it? I don't think so. Don't you use God, damn it? Don't you use Jesus Christ as a form of cuss? Well, I use Jesus Christ as a flame of worship, as my creator, as my savior. And yet, you use Jesus Christ, who you do not believe in, as God. You use his name as the ultimate curse. Shame on you. Muhammad, why don't you get upset like the women? The women don't evolve, didn't come from apes. Muhammad, will you get the word out there to say Allah, damn it, and get them to curse Muhammad? Come on, get out there. We need a religious revolt here because Jesus Christ is praised among the unbelievers by his holy, righteous name. For Acts 4.12 says, There is no other name amongst men whereby we are given to be saved. That's the name of Jesus Christ. If you like, I can go to Acts 4.12 and I can read that verse to you, which I think I will. I'll hold this place in Romans. Acts 4. Neither is there salvation in any other, for there is no other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved, and you atheists use that name as a cuss. And to you I say, prepare to meet that God when you stand before Jesus Christ one day and have to give an account you calling out his name in vain. You do know that's the second commandment violation of the Big Ten. Thou shalt not take the Lord's name in vain. But atheists do. Happy birthday, atheists. I light another candle, but you're in darkness. And you profess to be in darkness, and you're fools. Alright, Romans chapter 1, verse 23. I'm going to quote these chapter verses so you know. So you don't think I'm making this up. Hey, I might be making this up. I might be on the radio or TV evangelism preaching. You never know. I want you to know that this is coming out of the Bible. That's the Word of God. The Bible is the Word of God, the King James 1611 Bible. Believe it or not. Verse 23, And change the glory of the uncorruptible God into an image made like unto corruptible man, and birds, and four-footed four -footed beasts, and creepy things. <laughs> There's your evolution teaching. Man came from scum. Man became a fish. Man became fish that walked on water. Man became an ape in the jungle. And here we are scratching our heads and wiping our butts. Evolution. So, in the form of evolution that God is true, let every man be a liar. And that the true thing is the gospel that Jesus Christ died for our sins according to the scripture. And was buried. And arose again the third day according to the scripture. Well, let me ask you, a foolish man that professes that there's no God, that you're in darkness, when these whales wash up on the beach, why do you put them back out in the ocean? They're trying to grow legs. These animals that wash up on the beach are trying to grow legs. Give them a million years, will you? And we can watch that whale up on the beach and start walking and get himself a CD player or and start rapping or whatever that whale wants to do. He wants to be a man, but you keep throwing him back out in the water. That's ridiculous, and yet the Bible says, For man, for mankind, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved. Now, you can't save whales. Unless you want to eat your peas and carrots first, then you save the whale for later. I bet you they taste like chicken. I just made somebody mad. You can't save animals. You've got to save your soul by Jesus Christ. The Jesus Christ that fools who say there is no 
God comes up with animals as a form of, re of worship as uh, the bald eagle of America? That's a protected animal. But human life is not protected. Oh, we got to send a sea turtle down uh, onto uh, uh, the, the peninsula down there to get rescued, but we can't take care of homeless vets. Why is the government paying for sea turtles and they're not paying for homeless vets? And yet God says, whosoever comes to him and believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, whoever you are, born of a woman, you can be saved. That's quite an interesting thing for atheists versus Christians. Atheists preach to animals and non-living things, and Christians go to the people and preach to them the gospel that Jesus died for their sins, according to the scriptures, and was buried and arose again, according to the scriptures, that this Bible has been printed since 1600, this Bible has been in place since the disciples and the apostles went in this Bible, and yet you've got to change your science, you've got to change your evolution, because Pluto was a planet yesterday, and now it's no more a planet. Aww. And yet Jesus Christ will always be on the throne at the right hand of the Father, as the one that saves man's souls. Religion is man-made, and Jesus Christ is God. But we haven't had to change salvation of God, but we got to teach and, tra and change your atheist teaching. Schools have to keep on buying new textbooks for you atheists. And yet we just need one Bible, the King James 1611 Bible. One Bible. What's the problem? That's a problem. Somebody don't want this message preached. Yeah, see? Alright. Romans chapter 1, verse 24. Wherefore God, G-O-D, prepare to meet thy God. Happy birthday, atheist. Wherefore God also gave them up. Your know God will say to you, atheist, I've had it with you. I'll finish with you. Some of you are brand new. You're, you're, what on earth is going on here? We're preaching the gospel. We're preaching that Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes unto the Father but by Jesus Christ. We're preaching that your religion can't save you. You can't save you. Nothing can save you but Jesus Christ. And we have men and women that are here every week, as we are here every week, who have rejected the gospel that we are preaching to them. And God one day may say, I've had it with you. I've turned you off. You read Proverbs chapter 1, I know you haven't. I've read it to you. There are some places, uh, some people, God says, I'm not listening to you no longer. That is in the worst condition you can get being a living soul on this planet Earth. The worst thing that can happen to you living on this earth is God says, I ain't listening to you no more. You just keep on doing it your way. I think the man in black sang that. Almost has a name like Santa, I guess. To be frank. Um, I'm not going to say his name, though. There are sometimes in some people's life that God will say, that's it, I'm done. And when we talk about people who do not believe in God, the mercy and grace of God is that we are here for, for you to hear the gospel. You're continuing rejecting it, rejecting it, rejecting it. One day you'll be doomed. And it's simple. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved. Saved from what? Hell. Did I say that yet today? I gotta say hell. Because without Jesus Christ, that's where you're going. And this earth is not hell. Feel this breeze? Isn't it nice? Doesn't it feel good today? 
This will not be in hell. You think it's hot in Florida? Wait till you try hell. As a matter of fact, let me, let me rephrase that one. Don't try hell. Believe on Jesus Christ to be saved. And when I see some of these drivers here, you better get saved today because you just may get hit by some of these idiots. Man, I have seen some close calls of these drivers and pedestrians. And you do not know when your time is up. You do not know when death will call. And your salvation rests upon what you do before you die. You see, the afterlife of heaven and hell can't be a trial, period. You can't say, well, let me see what happens, then I'll come back. That's not the case. You see, you may say there's no God, but the Bible, the Word of God, says there's a God. You can't hide by your ignorance. You can't hide by your foolishness. Though you profess that there's no God, God answers to you, prepare to meet thy God. And gives half a chapter about you. Now I'll leave you to read Romans 1 later because it talks about other people. That's not the subject of our thing today. But let me read 24. Wherefore God also gave them up to their uncleanness through the lust of their own hearts. If you're unclean and you got lust, you ain't going to heaven. You haven't been washed in the Lamb of God which take away the sin of the world. And don't think a man can take away your sin. You're going to rely on another sinner to take away your sin. How illogical. Using a professing word. Let me bring that word down to the simple thing. How stupid for you to, to believe another man can forgive you of your sin. By professing to believe another human. Hail Mary. Mary can't do nothing for you. The name I read in Acts 4.12 is the name Jesus Christ. To dishonor their own bodies between themselves. Who changed the truth of God into a lie. God says your evolution is a lie. You want to guess who lies? Acts Excuse me, John 8, 44. The lawyer is Satan. Your evolution is from Satan and not God. That's why you say there's no God. In your heart, you're professing to believe in Satan. But let me tell you something. Let me tell you the truth about the Bible, what the Bible says. Satan, the devil, Lucifer, he is a god. Small g. Though you profess to be an atheist, you don't believe in God, you follow a god, small g, Satan. And your belief that you come from monkeys, big bang, the Bible says that God says that's a liar, and that lie comes from Satan, John 8, 44. I'm giving you the scripture. I'm reading to you from the scripture. I am telling you what you don't believe in, what you do believe in. When you profess that there's no God, that's an excuse that will not carry off with God. Your excuse has been rebuked by... For those that say there is no God, your excuse has been rebuked by the fact that God says, prepare to meet thy God. And that God says, hey, you're going to meet me one day. He says about your teaching, it's a lie. You want to know what God says about God, who is God? He says, I am the way, 
the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. Those are the words of Jesus Christ, who is God. Now, your small g God, Satan, devil, Lucifer, will do anything he can to get you to turn away from God. That you may not have salvation. Who change the truth of God into a lie and worship and serve the Creator more than the who excuse me who serve the creatures more than the Creator who is blessed forever. Amen. For this cause God gave them up again unto vile affliction. And we're not going to talk about this group of people next. Maybe next time, other time, but we're talking about fools, we're talking about professors, we're talking about evolution, we're talking about the fool has said in his heart that there's no God on April Fool's Day. We wish you a happy birthday and give you the message on your cake. Here's the message, fools, on your birthday cake. Prepare the meat, thy God. And we can't give you no candles because you're in darkness. And yet I can give you light. Jesus said, I am the light of the world. And I wouldn't blow that out. I would take heed to what the Bible says. Not what I'm saying, to what the Bible says. I am quoting from the Bible. I would take heed to what God is saying and believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and be saved and turn from your foolishness and unto wisdom, knowledge, and understanding of God and the Holy. Now with April Fool's Day, professors and evolution and Jesus saves, and Jesus saves alone. Let me turn to Proverbs chapter 1, shall I? Anybody a jet? I ain't going to listen to you anyway. Now when we talk about this, we're going to talk about why we're here today again. And I will read this passage of Proverbs chapter 1 when we will tell the people why we're here. Because some of you are saying, what on earth are you doing? Why are you screaming at us? The Bible says, go eat all the world and lip sync the gospel. No. The Bible says, go eat all the world and whisper the gospel. No. Where is it? Isaiah, chapter 58, verse 1. Cry aloud, spare not, lift up thy voice like a trumpet, and show my people their transgression. The Bible says, go eat all the world, and preach the gospel. So, Proverbs chapter 1. Wisdom cries without. She utters her voice in the street. Hey, Proverbs chapter 1 speaks about a street preacher. A street preacher with the Bible, quoting from the Bible, is your wisdom. A professor with a textbook in a classroom is a fool. Happy birthday to you. April Fool's Day. I'm enjoying this. Wisdom cry without, she utters her voice in the streets. She cries in the chief place of concourse. Concourse, here, there's business. There's merchandising. There's people. They're coming. They're going. They're parking. They're leaving. There's traffic. Go where the people are. Okay, here I am with the gospel. Go ye in all the world and preach that Jesus Christ died for their sins, was buried, and arose again the third day according to Scripture, that they may know to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ to be saved. Saved from what? Hell! Okay. Now, 22, Proverbs 1, 22. How 
wrong, ye simple ones, will you love simplicity? Simple. You don't know. You have no idea. You don't understand what's being said right now. In Isaiah 1.18, we say to you, come now. Come on, come on out, and we'll help you. We will show you what the Bible has proclaimed for your life. We will tell you what God has expected from you of what you need to do to be saved. Simple. You don't know. There's nothing wrong with being simple. Break that pride. Break that proudness and step out and say, Hey, I don't know what you're talking about. Come. Can you take that Bible and really show me what I need to do? Come. Now. Before you die. Who cares what your friend is saying? He ain't no friend. And he ain't going to be your friend in hell. Come on, you simple ones. It's, it's a glory to God for you to be simple and say, Hey, I don't know. But show me. A wise man will stop and ask directions before he ends up on another continent when he doesn't know where he's going. See, you won't stop and ask for directions. And there's more out there to show you the wrong way so God says, go ye in all the world and preach my gospel and show those people what they need to do to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. Step out. Come on. We'll show you. We'll show you from the Bible what God expects from you to believe on Jesus to be saved. You don't want to go to hell. How you doing? God bless you. Thank you. You may think you want to go to hell, but once you get into hell, you're going to want to get out, and you can't. Now's the time of salvation. How long, you simple ones, will you love simplicity and the scorners delight in their scorning? Now, what's a scorner? I wish he shut up. Jesus would never do that. My church doesn't do that. You're a fanatic. You're foolish. Shut up. Go away. Put it in the church house. Get away from us. That's your scorner in the Bible. And scorners are not saved. No one who refutes the word of God being preached can be saved. Because the power of salvation through Jesus Christ and the word of God is your eternal hope. Alright, this verse now I have put it in my heart. This verse I'm going to read again is prepared. Romans 1, no. Alright, Proverbs 1, 22. How long, ye simple ones, will you love simplicity? And the scorners delight in their scorning. And the fools, happy birthday, hate knowledge. You know what the Bible said to you atheists? I'm going to preach my word to you and you're going to hate it. Don't you love it when God is right and you're wrong? Don't you just love when the Bible is proven to be true by you? See, you people do not realize that when you reject the Word of God, you are mentioned in the Bible. You are mentioned by Jesus Christ. Jesus said, marvel not if the world hates you. So i got to thank you people very much for making the Bible more real to me. I hope that angered you. Your reactions against Jesus, God, and the Bible have proven the Bible to be true. And to get back on April Fool's Day, the Bible says, and fools hate knowledge. 
Now, when you reject these gospel tracts that we are trying to hand to you, you don't want anything to do with God. God calls you a fool. If you hear me call you fool, I've got Proverbs chapter 1, verse 22 as a Bible verse to call you a fool. So don't get irritated. Don't get offended. If I see you reject the gospel track here and I say, you're a fool. Because I'll open up the Bible and read it to you. Because what these pieces of paper that my wife and daughter are handing to you are knowledge. What's the knowledge? The knowledge to know God better. And know what God expects from you. I don't see any other pieces of paper of knowledge being passed around. You've got some vendors here who will sell you uh, fruit and vegetables that are unripe. They are bad. They are spoiled. They are leaky. They put them on the bottom. But what we have here is knowledge of the holy, knowledge of what to be saved, knowledge how to get out of hell, the knowledge of God. I dare any of you atheists to step out and get this knowledge. But you won't. The Bible says you won't. And if you do step out and say, hey, I want that, you're not an atheist. You're not a fool. So walk on by and reject the word of God that's being handed to you, and you are a fool. And I'm not saying that. The Bible's saying that. Salvation is a free gift. We got the fire and rescue over here. What if they come for you today? What if they come for a medical need of you today and they turn off those lights because your life has been turned off? Where will you be? What if the paddles and CPR and whatever can't save your soul anymore? You die, where will you be? The Bible says, these things have I written unto you that you might know you have eternal. I know where I'm going. Of a surety. Listen, in America today, in England, people are dying on the streets. In mass amount of numbers. People here in Daytona Beach, all someone's got to do is take a left-hand turn or a right-hand turn. You think those barricades are going to stop a car? And as you lay under a car and you pass your life unto death, have you believed on the Lord Jesus Christ? There are radicals in America today, and they will take your life. It may be today, or in your body right now, might be a little particle in your blood that will make you unable to walk, unable to talk, unable to move, and you might die from that. And once you go off into eternity, you can't come back. You see, a fool will die as a wise man. I will die in Christ. You will die in your own sins. I will go to God the Father by the righteousness, by the finished work, by the merit, by the gospel of Jesus Christ. You will go to hell with your sins. And you will burn in hell, pay for your own sins. And Christ died that we might have life. You do not... There goes another fool rejecting the word of God. 
You do not need to go to hell. You need and believe on the Lord Jesus Christ to be saved. And you can do that right now. Come. And be saved by the blood of the Lamb, which washes away our sins. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in Him should not perish, but have everlasting life. And that life rests upon Jesus Christ. There is none good, no, not one, says the Scripture. For all have sinned, for all have come short of the glory of God. I see fools passing up the Word of God. There's an ambulance. What if they were to take you to the hospital? Not living any longer. They'll be carrying you off to the morgue. Where will your soul be? They carry dead people in ambulances too, you know. And if you're dead in an ambulance, you are already somewhere in eternity. You're either absent from the body and present with the Lord, or you are in hell burning. And wouldn't it be such a great thing to wake up in hell after hearing Bible preaching? Wouldn't that torment you forever? The fool, the Bible says, hate knowledge. And the knowledge is in the Word of God. There's no knowledge of working on a car, even though that's good. There's no knowledge of learning how to build a house, that's good. But that knowledge cannot save you. You may have the knowledge to how to unpeel an orange, but that's not going to get you the glory. You may have the knowledge of Mary. She ain't going to get you the glory. You may have the orange, uh, the, the knowledge to kill Christians. That ain't definitely going to get you to heaven. You may have the knowledge of the name Allah. That ain't going to get you to heaven. Only by the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ, the Lamb of God, which take away the sin of the world. There's one mediator between God and man, the man Christ Jesus. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, for I have believed on the Lord Jesus Christ. There's hope in Jesus. There's no hope in your foolishness. Happy birthday. April Fool's Day, this is your birthday. <laughs> and the Bible says in, in Psalms chapter 1, that, I mean, Psalms, we go over there, I'll read it to you, make sure. I don't want you to think I'm lying to you. Psalm 14, 1, the fool has said in his heart, there is no God. They are corrupt. They've done abominable works. There is no, there is none that doeth good. In the eyes of God, you fools, you don't do no good. The Bible says in Romans chapter 3, there is none good. No, not one. For all have sinned. For all have come to short of glory of God. Jesus said, though, Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. Fruits are good, but you're not going to find them in, he in hell. So on this day to honor fools, I say happy birthday, but I say, I'll tell you when I say happy birthday, oh, uh, oh this is not good, oh, boy, I tell you, I couldn't do this on my, my own. John chapter 3, let me tell you happy birthday fools. John chapter 3. Hey, fools, happy birthday. Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except the man be born again. Come out of your birthday of being a fool and be, be saved. Have your name written in the last book. I could have come up with that one even better.
Your first ter- birthday will lead you to hell. Your second birthday will lead you to Jesus. Amen. I like this message. I like. I'm. I like this fool. I like preaching your birthday. And I guarantee next year, Lord willing, it won't be on a Saturday. You see, God has given us word for you to hear, for you to believe on His Son. God does not want you to go to hell. If you could do something, if there was no hell, if you could save yourself, then why was there Jesus Christ? Why? Why did He leave heaven to come down this miserable rocking planet and wasn't to hang out with the homeboys? He came down here because He knows that you can't do anything to be saved. He came down here for your mercy, for your grace, because He loves you. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in Him should not perish, but have everlasting life. That's why we have Jesus, and that's why we have the Bible. You know why we got science books? So the professing fools can make more money. There you go. Because... Every two years, every three years, you got to replace those science books because they're wrong, because they're dead wrong, because Pluto was a planet yesterday and it's no longer a planet today, and we got to read through the science books because tomorrow, for another twenty-four dollars, we can make Pluto a planet again. And my God says in the Book of Psalms, He knows the names of all the stars. You can't even count them. That's my God. That's the God that fools reject on your birthday, April Fool's Day. Ye must be born again. Wouldn't it be great an atheist were to believe on Jesus Christ on April 1st and have his name written down on April 1st, on April Fool's Day, and his name is written down, he's a saved Christian, that would be a joke, that would be honor, that would praise the angels. On his fullest birthday, he became saved. You can be saved on your foolish birthday, today. You may not have a tomorrow. Tomorrow for you might be February 30th. It will never come. You're not guaranteed another hour. On this time right here, we preach the gospel because death is coming. The wages of sin is death, but the gift of God's eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Don't say you put it off. Behold, now is the time of salvation. Isaiah 1.18 says, Come now! I might be preaching to someone who's not going to live no longer today. And your birthday, April 1st, may be tomorrow, February 30th. You say... There is no February 30th. Correct. They may never be a March 2nd. I mean, April 2nd for you. Preach more love. The love is that God has sent us. God has given me a loud voice to use for you. To hear the gospel. Wouldn't it be interesting if you meet the God you do not believe in? At the great white throne judgment, Revelation 20. Wouldn't it be interesting if you got to proclaim, the Bible says, that Jesus is Lord? Alright? What the Bible says. Wouldn't it be more interesting if you would have to thank God for sending someone like me to come and tell you that what you don't believe in? I don't know if that's going to happen. But I do, I do think one thing. I think. I think. You can throw this in the garbage can. I don't want you to think I'm worshiping myself or anything because we worship Jesus. But I think one day, whether you do or you don't, these messages, I think one day you're going to thank God that God sent us. Whether you do or do not believe. Because if you're to go off into hell, these messages are going to be used to condemn you. Because I know what you're going to say. God 
part I never knew. And God's going to say, okay, play back the tape, April 1st, 2017, and all angels in heaven prepare for a comedy, prepare for laughter of what that brother preached to the atheist. And the messages every week might be played back at your judgment that you did hear. And when you hear that Jesus saves and you stand before God at the great white throne judgment, you can never say, I never knew. Because we have already told you Jesus saved. You can't tell Jesus you never knew without excuse. When you hear Jesus saves, there's no excuse. You can't come to God with your religion. You can't come to God with your works when you hear Jesus saves. When you hear, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved, there is no excuse of your religion or anything else but Jesus. You have no excuse. Now, I played fun with April 1st, but it's a serious matter. Your death is a serious matter because it is not over. You do not come back as a cow. You do not want to come back as shrimp because everybody eats shrimp. Imagine your your recorded God brings you back as a shrimp and from a hungry shark. There is no reincarnation. The only incarnation is a drink that you put in your coffee in the morning. They have carnations for when you die. There is only one hope for your soul, the Lamb of God which take away the sin of the world. It's plain and simple to say, no Jesus, no heaven. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. And you won't hear that junk music in heaven either. Isn't that a glory? Hey, right, get saved for two reasons. I don't want to go to hell and I don't want to hear that music no more. Two great things have happened for your for your life. Number one, Jesus came to save sinners. Number two, Jesus has sent us with the gospel that you may hear how to be saved. You will die. And when you die, you will wake up somewhere. Now there's only two places. There's no three, four, five. There's no virgins. There's no purgatory. There's no planet with a bunch of women to mate with. There's no reincarnation. It is heaven or it's hell. And without Jesus Christ, you are already going to hell. And the sorry thing is, it may be today we don't know. We don't know, do we? Glory to God, you may not die today. But maybe the Lord Jesus Christ will come for His bride today. Then you can talk about a type of hell being on this earth, but that's another subject. You know what could happen today? You can die in your sins today. I advise you not to. You know what else could happen today? Jesus Christ may come and you will be left behind. 
Maybe not. Maybe there will be a second. Maybe there will be a third. Maybe there will be a 2018. But do you know? Do you know? Are you 100% sure if you were to drop dead right now? Where you will be in eternity? Are you assured that cloud right now, that trump will sound, and the dead in Christ shall rise, and those that are alive, will you go? If the Lord were come right now and take those that are alive, you guys would applaud. Until your new leader comes. And let me tell you, if the Lord were to come soon, I hope He does, if He were to come today, and you are left behind, you better gather with the nation that loves and protects Israel. That's tribulation passage. That's not the church age. That letter. Right now, to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ to be saved. But if you were to miss the rapture, Get with a nation that protects and loves and honors the Jew. The Jew. Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. You will get into the millennium. That's tribulation passage I just taught you. That is not today. That's if you miss the rapture. But right now, before the rapture, before your death, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved. That means you. That means you. No, not the person you're looking at. You. I get a mirror and have you look at yourself. You. Y O U. You've got to be held for your own accountability. Mom can't save you, Dad can't save you, your church can't save you, baptism can't save you, Allah can't save you, Mary can't save you, nothing can save you but Jesus Christ. And Jesus Christ alone. And being saved doesn't include, well, there's just no God. I will believe and know God, I will be saved. No, you won't. The Bible says, prepare to meet thy God, even though you don't believe in God. There's no excuse. There's no way getting around Jesus. Unless you want to go to hell. There is nothing more than Jesus. There is nothing, nothing, no name, no nothing, no one that can save but the Son of God, who is God, Acts 20, 28, Jesus, who died for our sins according to the Scriptures, and was buried, and arose again the third day according to the Scriptures. Your priest is a sinner too. How's he going to take away your sins? How's he going to do that? He may be messing around with children. Oh, really? You're going to trust in somebody who does that? How do you know that's real holy water? I used to drink it when I was a boy. How do you know? How do you know it's not Daytona's uh, beach water? That's going to get you to heaven. I was baptized in the Atlantic Ocean, really, where a bunch of fish poop, and that's going to get you to heaven. My church, your church, really. If your church can save you, why is it on this planet Earth? When Jesus Christ is seated at the right hand of the Father. There are no Baptists, there are no Catholics, there are no Atheists, there are no Pentecostals, there are no Jehovah Witnesses, there are none of those denominations in heaven. There are Christians. How do you become a Christian? You come to Calvary. You say, Jesus, I'm a sinner. I can't.
can't do nothing with my sin. You are the Lamb of God which take away the sin of the world. Lord, I need to be saved. I need you to wash me in your blood. And you need to go to the empty tomb. And say, Lord, they put you in that tomb. You are dead. And you need to see the risen Savior. Come out of that tomb without an Easter bunny. Come and be alive. The third day, according to the Scriptures, you need to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ that came out of that tomb. That's how you become a Christian. That is seated right now at the right hand of the Father. That's how you become a Christian. You do not become a Christian by eating Jesus. That's called cannibalism. And there are plenty of cannibals on island nations all over this world. And we parachuted you there, they would eat you, and they won't go to heaven. They'll just get themselves a nice, plump, juicy American meal with barbecue sauce. When Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life, there's no room for no other. Because then he goes on to say, no man cometh unto the Father but by me. And believe it or not, God has sent us with his word. Go into all the world and preach the gospel that Christ died for your sins. It's not selling magazines. Yeah, he just passed away last year. Those people that come to your door do not believe that God is Jesus and Jesus is God. They've got a religion. And those people that come on bikes, God is not going to give a prophet big sunglasses and golden plates. That won't work. They've got to come to you with a King James 1611 Bible with the Word of God that proclaims that Jesus alone saves. Not of works, least any man should boast. And if you come to Jesus, you will not be rejected. You will not be cast out. You come to Jesus as a sinner. Not, in, not, to, not to criticize, not to rebuke God, but you come to Jesus as a sinner, He'll take you in. And you repent of your sins, and your name will be written down in the Lamb's Book of Life. That's it. Any fool can do it if he wants the knowledge. Yea, though I walk through the valley of shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. You know who thou art with me? The beginning of that verse talks about the shepherd. You know who that shepherd is? It's the Lord Jesus Christ. Your pastor may leave you. I know he's a shepherd, but he may leave you. He may forsake you. He may not care. But Jesus does. If you don't deny Him, Jesus says in the Gospel of John, I will not deny you before the Father and the angels. You know what the angels do when you confess Jesus as your Savior? They rejoice. They rejoice more than a guy hitting a, a baseball or someone making left-hand turns. Or putting a ball through a hoop. And today, you can have your name written down in the Lamb's Book of Life. You can be saved today. You can go when you die to heaven by the blood of Jesus Christ. Today, now, it may not be tomorrow. There may be no tomorrow. I'm assured of two things. There was a yesterday and death. I might die before taxes. After all, it's April 1st. Tax day is April 15th. You may die before tax day. They say death and taxes. Well, 
You may never leave, never, you know, how do I know? Wasn't there on April 12th, I forget which year, a bunch of people died on a ship on this maiden voyage heading to New York? A boat that God could not sink? And many of those lives in the depths of a frozen ocean died with hypothermia and woke up in a devil's hell burning today. You know what all those people were looking forward to? New York. We're going to New York. You know where they woke up? In hell. There was no New York. You may be looking forward to the basketball game today. You may be looking forward to go shopping. You may be looking forward to go somewhere today. That may never happen. The next thing that may happen on your to-do list today is death. And you didn't write it down. There goes more fools rejecting the Word of God. Proverbs chapter 1, 23. I can say that. I know that verse. I can say it. You're a fool. You don't have to be foolish. You can be wise. You can come to Jesus Christ and believe on Him. Be offended what you will. But in hell you're going to wish you changed your status from fool to wisdom. You know what people in hell will have in common with you? They all rejected Jesus Christ. That's the good sinner, and that's the awesome wicked sinner. See, there's no degrees of sin with God. All have sinned. But the sin that will send you into hell is rejecting Jesus Christ. You know, there are good people in hell... There are pedophiles, there are rapists, there are family men that paid their bills, loved their family, did what they were supposed to. There were old men that were reliable, there are soldiers that are in hell, there are good men, there are wicked men, there are all kinds of people in hell, there are nice people, there are wonderful women in hell, there are great women in hell, there are terrible women in hell, there are people in hell because they rejected Jesus Christ. You know who are in heaven? Only those that have believed on Jesus Christ. There's no denominations in heaven. You are washed in the blood of the land, or you are burning in the lake of fire. You're washed or burning. You can't have both. You can't go into the burning lake of fire and be washed. <laughs> That thief, I mean, that, that that rich man that died and went into hell, that I just want a little drop of water to cool my dog. I don't want an ocean. I want, I don't want a cup of water. I want a little drop of water. That's only water he wants. And he never did or ever will get that water. Neither will you. Oh, when I get to hell, I'm gonna have, I'm gonna drink beer and party. You can't even get a little drop of water. How are you gonna get? Who's gonna deliver it to you? You can't take no. Listen, you can't take nothing with you to the grave. Who's gonna deliver the alcohol? 